is it about JVR's game that made him the candidate to play? Well, he's played there before. So, you know, it doesn't take <coughs> rocket science to, to go in that direction when a player's previously played that, obviously not at the pro level, but in, in the college level. And, and we think that, you know, he's more of the, the fit right now. And uh, we'll see what uh, the next couple of days. Talk of moving him uh, prior to last season uh, in the middle. Yeah, I made that comment over the summer months, and then it was big news. I didn't realize it was that big of news because it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I guess maybe that's what happened, and and I, that was my first test on on me about maybe I should shut my mouth. <laughs> you had to think about it at least. Well, I, I, we thought about it that back then, but the, just the way that things unfolded, that we never really were pressed into having to try it, and we thought about it and. We just felt that it was better suited to, to go in the other direction, and obviously it didn't for the 18 games I was here. But then when we came back, we slotted some people together, and it, it's been kind of like we replaced him due to Lupul's injuries, and then he kind of found a spot there with Kessel and Bozak. And again, that's the pairing that I'm looking for. And right now we're we're looking at having you know as as much depth as we possibly can. The position has sort of evolved. You know, you used to think the centerman just as a playmaker. Now it's bigger guys that they can they can shoot as well as, as well as they can they can pass. Oh yeah, they, they, the the center iceman and you can talk to all of the masterminds that build hockey clubs. And you're going to talk. They're going to say they're going to build down the middle. And it starts from the goaltender to defense to centers, and that's the how important they are. And if you look at the successful teams and. There's two that come to mind. If you go to Pittsburgh, they've got Crosby and Malkin. You go to Boston, they've got Krejci and Bergeron. You know, those are two big centers, the Stahl brothers in, in Carolina. You know, so if you look at the big programs or the big hockey clubs or the t teams that have had a fair amount of success over the last while, you can always point to their center ice position as being a, a solid position for them. What can you guys do to help JVR to make the adjustment? Well, we can play smarter, that's for sure. You know, and that's what really we're, we're trying to focus on is, is, is we're doing some things that are not, we're really not giving ourselves the best chance. And some of the things that we have been doing have crept into our game and they've become more the norm than abnormal. And that's our job as a coaching staff to eliminate those things. Can there be a good time for this sort of thing to happen to have to deal with two centers in? Uh, I don't know. We, we have a, a break here, a little bit in the schedule, but it's going to pick right up right after it. You know, I think once we start on, on, the, uh, on Friday night, I think it's something like seven games in 12 days. So, yeah, we, we have a little bit of a break here now until Friday, but once you start, it comes right back at you. And that's what life in the NHL is, is you either play three games or four games a week. That's what you do. So there's no real rest or there's no real good time when their players are out for long term. We're talking, you know, six, eight weeks. We're talking long term injury for two of the, you know, the people with Bozak and his hamstring and now with Boland and the laceration. Is there a timeline on Boland or other than just indefinitely? Just indefinitely at this point. The reassessment, as I told you, would be done after the 10-day mark, and that's happened. And he's not—he's uh, not onto a bike and working out or pedaling or any of that stuff. So he's—he's he's still a ways away. You actually work maybe for JVR to take the face-offs to get going. Well, we'd like to to uh, at least baptize him in in the area, and uh, I think our team could do a lot more. We have been getting a little bit better if our percentages from the face-off. Uh, circle, but we have to get a lot better. We've got to start to compete more on the face-off, and we have to do less of trying to win them. Maybe start tying them up and having people come in, because it's it's uh, a st it's a stat that rare, very rarely gets highlighted. But if you're always chasing and you're not starting with the puck, then you're in defensive mode. You're in recovery mode, and we have been in recovery mode too much. Is there a time frame on bowling? No. It's too early to say, you know, they don't, they don't really give you that until uh, they'll say that, yeah, they, you, they could say that it's five months and then we hope it's two, you know, and so we're, we don't really know 
until the, the healing process starts and they do an assessment and then we'll get uh, more tightened in on the time frame for you. Is he back in Toronto yet? Or? Yeah, he's flying back now. Yeah, he's on a flight now. Randy uh, skated a bit at the end there. You wanted to show the guys maybe it's not so tough. It was tough on me. <laughs> I only did four of them, and uh, those were I just they just said, well, well if you're gonna we're gonna skate, why don't you skate? It's amazing you guys noticed it because I, every time I look up, all you guys ever do is play. Other. I thought you guys come to practice to watch. You you must miss everything because all you guys do is tweet or twit or whatever you're doing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like when we were at the chalk bar, all you see is your, your foreheads. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Hey. <laughs> well, that's exactly there. <laughs> that's exactly what we see. So. <laughs>